Ta da! There. And then down. Oh, <gasps> oh, I hear babies out there. Okay, all right. Thank you. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 36 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor, and I will be your host. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, though we do get up to other fiber-related topics from time to time. I am coming to you from Henderson, Nevada, which is a small suburb outside of Las Vegas, Nevada in the U.S. This is where I am from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our three-and-a-half-year-old son, Angus, our nine-month-old son, Ronan, and our big fat house cat, Oscar. If this is one of your first times checking out the podcast, thank you so much for coming over to this cozy little corner of YouTube to check it out. And if you are a returning viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for coming back time and time again every time I upload something new here on the Wool Needles Hands Fiber Journey channel. If you'd like to get in touch with me, you can do so via email. The email account associated with the podcast is woolneedleshands at gmail.com. You can also get in touch with me via snail mail as well. There's actually a P.O. Box address in the about section of the channel. There's also a Pinterest account associated with the podcast. You can find that by going to Pinterest and searching Wool Needles Hands and Knitting Podcast or simply follow the link that I provide down below. This is just a place where uh, we kind of curate visual show notes, things that are mentioned here on the show. You can find them on the Pinterest board there if we feel comfortable um, pinning there. If it's obvious that we're allowed to pin to Pinterest, we'll include it there. If we're not so sure, we just err on the side of being cautious and we don't pin them to Pinterest. Otherwise, you can find anything that I mentioned here on the podcast linked down below in the show notes. The Pinterest moderator is Steffi. She is at Hootie Knits on Ravelry. So Steffi, thank you so much for all your hard work. There's also a Ravelry page for the podcast. Head over to Ravelry, go to the groups tab, type in Wool Needles Hands, a knitting podcast, or just Wool Needles Hands, and you're sure to find us there. You can join there. You can get involved in some of the knit alongs that we have going on right now. We have one year long knit along that's wrapping up at the end of this month. We have another knit along that is also wrapping up at the end of this month, but we are going to be kicking off with a few new knit alongs starting in 2019, which I'll talk about in just a little bit, but definitely head over there so you can get involved in the conversation in that neck of the woods. You can also find me on Instagram. I have two Instagram accounts, one that's associated with all of my knitting and the podcast, and one that's associated with my hand-dyed yarn business, Fiber for the People. You can find all of my knitty and podcasting related posts over at Wool Needles Hands. And then if you want to follow Fiber for the People, you can do so by going to at fiber.for.the.people. If you're not familiar with Fiber for the People, check out the Instagram account. You can see lots of beautiful yarn that has either been in the shop or is coming to the shop. There's a direct link to the online shop in the bio of the Instagram account, but of course I will link to that down below as well and we'll talk a little bit more about Fiber for the People in just a second, but those are the two accounts where you can find me on Instagram. In Fiber for the People news, there is not a new shop update scheduled for December. Last weekend I wrapped up the last full shop update of 2018, so the next shop update for Fiber for the People won't be until Saturday, January 5th. That'll be a full ready to ship shop update. And you can keep posted on that particular shop update update and all other future shop updates by heading over to the shop site, signing up for the newsletter, and of course following on Instagram. I am most active on Instagram. Um, that's definitely the best place to keep updated on all goings on of Fiber for the People, but definitely sign up for the newsletter. There are special promos that show up from time to time as little added perks for being a newsletter subscriber, but of course you will always stay in the loop of upcoming shop updates that way. That being said, there is going to be some action in the Fiber for the People shop this Saturday, and that is going to be a pre pre-order update for a single colorway on a single base. If you follow Fiber for the People on Instagram, you may have noticed that the colorway Lights Through the Trees, which is a colorway that's been here since last year around this time, it has gone crazy, crazy on the Merino Bulky base, which is also a new base that I'm offering in the shop. Um, I've brought it into the, I, I did a whole bunch of listings a week ago and they all sold out within hours. And then previously they all sold out. It was, it's just flown. It's crazy. Clearly, um, it's a little crazy so I'm super grateful for all of the attention that this colorway and this yarn base is getting and so on Saturday I'm gonna be opening up pre-order listings for just that colorway lights through the trees on the merino bulky base I'll go ahead and pop up a picture so you can see what we're talking about right over here um, there's a picture of the yarn and then if you look below that there is a picture of the yarn in action this is a post from Tiff Nealon she is an up-and-coming knitwear designer and she's working on a pattern here with the lights through the trees on the merino 
merino bulky base and it's gorgeous. So that will be coming to the shop on Saturday as pre-order listings. They won't ship until um, early to mid January, but you can get your hands on them if you've been eyeballing that um, and you haven't been able to snag one in previous updates. Or if this is your first time seeing that, you can head over there on Saturday and get your hands on one or more of Fiber for the People's Lights Through the Trees on the Merino Bulky Base. In other Fiber for the People news, the latest sock set club for Fiber for the People, those listings are live now. They went live last Saturday. They are still there. There's definitely plenty of listings left. If you are interested in being a part of the next Fiber for the People sock set club, the previous sock set club was called Color Fest. It was based on colorful celebrations around the world. I did a mini vlog series, which will be finishing up at the end of this month, on various different processes of coming up with the colorways for that sock set club, which I will be doing again for this sock set club as well. This sock set club is called a bird in the hand and all of the colorways are going to be inspired by birds and their beautiful feathery colorways. If you would like to get involved in a bird in the hand sock set club, head over to the shop site, fiberforthepeople.com, click on the collections tab and then go down to FFTP club. And that is where you can learn a little bit more about a bird in the hand sock set club. Listings will be available until January 4th. First. So you have some time if you are thinking about it, if you want to wait until the holidays are over, you can do that as well. The listings will run out though. So whichever comes first, if it's January 1st shows up first, or if the listings run out, that's um, kind of how I'm gauging that. So once it sells out, it sells out, but otherwise the listings will be up until January 1st. Since there's not another shop update until January 5th, I'm going to go ahead and show you a little yarn sexy segment, as I like to call it, of some of the pretty yarns that are in the shop right now should inspiration strike. And don't forget if you have yet to use your WNH coupon code. The code is WNH and that will get you 10% off your entire order. And before I forget, if you are a Las Vegas local, a neighbor of Fiber for the People, you get free shipping on any order. So when you go to checkout, just choose Las Vegas local and that will give you free shipping on your order. An added perk for being a local. <laughs>
what's in the shop right now. Like I said, if you're interested, head over to the shop. The shop has a new look now. I've done some redesigning and I'm really happy with the way it's turned out. So definitely head over, if anything, just to check out the website and see what's going on over there. I have an article on Lucky Strikes, which are special colorways that I use with the leftover dye particles of my dye sessions. I have the story behind Fiber for the People and how we got started. I link to the vlog series for the sock set clubs that I've done here on YouTube. Plus you can find those just here on the channel if you'd like, but head over, check out the shop, see what we have in store for you. And uh, maybe something will strike your fancy. Until then, look for the next full Fiber for the People shop update on January 5th. And like I said, pre-orders are available on Saturday for Lights Through the Trees on the Marina Bulky Base. All right, guys, it has been over a month since I recorded last. I think it's actually been just about a month since I recorded last. And that um, was unplanned originally, but I kind of stretched it out because I needed some extra time to just get things off my plate. And so I want to take a minute to not only... Um, chat a little bit about that, but then also to give you some updates on podcast news and tell you a little bit about how I'm going to be scheduling my uploads moving forward for 2019. So episode 35 was uploaded middle November. Yeah, early middle November. And then right after that, we took a little trip to California to see some friends. As soon as we came back from that trip, it got so crazy busy. I'm not sure what happened, business took off, which I'm thankful for. I feel blessed. It's um, It's been a whirlwind, but it's amazing. Um, but at the same time, advent calendars, I was finishing up advent calendars, getting them packaged, getting them ready for shipping, getting them mailed out, um, which is such an intense labor of love. I had no idea. And I, I love doing it. I'm definitely doing it for 2019. So those of you that maybe missed out on the advent calendar or definitely want to do it again next year, it's going to be there. Don't worry. I'm just going to start a lot earlier. But it was a crazy whirlwind. So that took me through Thanksgiving and a little bit after Thanksgiving and then um, special order requests. We have, um, there's an option in the shop where you can order a sweater's quantity of any of the colorways that are, you know, any of the regular colorways um, as like a dyed order option. Well, lots of those came in, which again, I'm so thankful for, but it just all happened at once and threw me for a loop. I, I would be lying if I said I was completely prepared for that kind of rush um, and it hasn't really let up. And so <laughs> I'm learning how to manage my time. And as some of you know, most of you know, if you are regular watchers of the podcast, I am a stay at home mom to two little boys. I have one who's three and a half and one who's nine months old. My husband teaches. Um, fortunately, he has a great schedule because he's home on the weekends and he doesn't work late. Um, but otherwise, I'm home with my children. So I'm a stay at home mom to them and I'm running my business and hosting the podcast here at the Wool Needles Hands Fiber Journey channel. Well, well, when all of this kind of started taking off, you know, in November, um, it definitely threw me for a loop. And I'm so utterly grateful for that. But that's where I've been for the last month is just getting my stuff together, <laughs> uh, making sure that nothing is getting, you know, forgotten or slipping through the cracks. I am a, a quality over quantity person, um, big time. For m most things in my life, <clears throat> I'm really about quality over quantity. I prefer to feel that what I'm putting forth is quality. Um, as much as I possibly can, as high quality as I can possibly make it. And so that has been my um, kind of my endeavor for the last month or so. So it, it, all good things, but I'm not going anywhere. Um, I've missed you guys. Hopefully you've missed me. It's so nice to be back here chatting with you guys. But anyway, moving forward with the news section of what I'm trying to tell you now is that podcasts are going to start being monthly uploads. So you will get a Wool Needles Hands podcast episode once a month in addition to the occasional vlogs that I will be doing for the sock set club that's coming up and then any other yarn dyeing vlogs or you know lifestyle vlogs that I include um, at that time. So podcasts will be, will be monthly, typically middle of the month and uh, but I, I mean I get, right now it's the middle of the month so yeah middle of the month and then other things will pop up on the channel in between podcast episodes I have to do this so I can balance things out between you know the business and my family of course which is number one and the podcast and this pod if, if anybody for even a second over the course of the last month was wondering if the wool needles hands podcast is going anywhere or if she's like you know hitching a ride out of here. Like, that's not the case. The podcast is not going anywhere. Um, I just took some time. 
that's pretty much it. So I think doing a monthly podcast upload will really help me to, like I said, focus on quality over quantity. Um, yeah, so that's kind of it moving forward for 2019. I have big plans uh, for 2019 in regards to knit alongs, and I'm really excited to chat with you guys about that. So that's coming up next. But anyway, thank you guys for your patience. Thank you for the sweet, kind messages that I've been receiving from, from many of you, uh, letting me know that you missed the podcast. That means so much to me. I can't even tell you. There is a lot of um, unusual it's not guilt. I don't, I don't even think it's guilt. It's I want to film the podcast and I'm having a hard time finding time to do it. I guess it's kind of like a guilty feeling. But whenever you send those nice, you know, uplifting messages to me, letting me know that you're, you know, that it's worth the wait, that you're waiting in the wings, ready for another episode, it just really means so much to me. I can't even tell you it's priceless. So thank you so much, those of you that have reached out. I really, really appreciate it. All right, guys, enough of that. Let's go ahead and get started. I have quite a full episode for you guys today. But let's start next with what's upcoming for knit alongs. We have two make-alongs going on over here at the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. We have a garland along, which I'll talk about in just a second, but we also have the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Cal 2018. And this is where we are knitting hats every month of the year 2018. And we just wrapped up November. November's theme was to knit a hat of your choice. Each of the months that we've been doing this has had a different theme. And you can learn all about that by heading over to Ravelry and clicking on the details for the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats knit along. But in the meantime, I'm going to share with you guys some of the finished objects for November. There were about, I think, almost 80 finished objects that got put into the November um, FO thread, and I would love to share all of those with you here, but there's no way that I'm going to be able to do that. So I'm going to try and put together a montage of as many as I can fit in a decent amount of time to share with you guys some of the beautiful hats that have come through for November. I'm super excited about this. You guys have created some really beautiful, beautiful finished objects. Some of the patterns I've seen in there I had never heard of before, and they, you've piqued my interest. I've added a few to my favorites. It's just so cool. It's I, I feel like this knit along has done double duty for me when it comes to not only seeing the beautiful things that you guys are working on, hosting a cool knit along here, but also um, kind of opening my eyes to some of these patterns I had never heard of before. So this month was definitely that for me as well. So I'm really excited to share with you guys some of the finished objects that are coming through for the November portion of the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Cal 2018. we just wrapped up November, I want to go ahead and announce a winner. But before I do that, I want to share with you the prize for the November portion. I didn't share this with you on the last episode of the podcast because I don't think I had a prize put together, but I'm really excited to share this one with you guys. So this is going to be the prize for November. So the first is going to be... Let me set that there. The first is going to be a bar of wool wash soap, and this is from Woolen & Co. This is, seriously, you guys, like one of my favorite wool wash soaps. Caitlin, who is the owner of Woolen & Co., she makes a mean wool wash soap and not even just wool wash, but also body bar soap. They're just wonderful. The smells are lovely. I can smell it coming through the box. Everything is just so, so nice. This is um, cherry blossom and it includes, and the, in, the ingredients are um, saponified oils of coconut, olive, lanolin, castor, avocado butter, mango butter, shea butter, fragrance, mica oxide colorants. 
So that's, and she's based out of Seattle, Washington. So I'm going to include this in the November portion of the prize. And also I'm going to include a skein of fiber for the people yarn, which is my hand dyed yarn business. And this is the new Merino bulky base. This is the hot ticket right now. I can't keep it in stock. Um, it's, amazing how fast this stuff goes. Actually, I, I lie. I take that back. I have two skeins in the shop right now on the colorway that I'm about to show you. Um, and it's dwindling fast. So I'm going to go ahead and show this to you. This is called Jamboree. It's a new colorway in the shop right now. Like I said, there are two skeins of this on the Merino bulky base right now. This is going to be part of the price for November. Like I said, this is the Jamboree colorway so pretty. I love it so much. I love this like tangerine. It's not even tangerine. It's like a poppy red tiger lily red color with this really pretty lilac purple. We've got some kind of golden, almost like a golden green pear color happening in there and then some really pretty maroon speckles. So that's Jamboree. This is on the Merino Bulky Base. It's beautiful. I'm going to take the label off. I feel like you just gotta see how pretty and plump the skein is without the label squinching it together. All right, so there you go. Super, super soft, absolutely love this. So you'll be getting a skein of Fiber for the People yarn on the new Merino bulky base in the Jamboree colorway. I'll slip the label back on here. In addition to delicious wool wash soap, from Woolen & Co. Okay, so the winner for November is Ann Leanne 88 She did the tied knots hat, absolutely gorgeous. I'll pop it up right over here so you can see it. Ann Leanne, get in touch with me, please. You can do so via email. Um, the link is down below, or you can get in touch with me on Ravelry, whatever is easiest for you. If I don't hear from you um, in a couple of days, I'll go ahead and reach out to you. But again, if you don't hear from me, um, reach out to me. Things get busy, so it's it's helpful if, if you see this to so shoot me an email right away. Um, you can direct message me on Instagram whatever whatever is easiest for you so that I can figure out where I need to send that prize and get it out to you right away. So congratulations and Leanne 88. This is the month of December and December's theme is color work, stranded color work. So we are working on stranded color work hats for the entire month of December. There are some gorgeous color work hats coming through. I'm going to show a few here in just a second. So if you have the itch to do some stranded color work, there is some time left in December. So go ahead and jump on it. Choose a bulky weight yarn or an Aran weight yarn if you want to just get it done under the gun or cast it on and even if you don't finish you can still submit it into the works in progress or chatter threads and it's just fun to kind of have a place to share that with other people who are working on similar projects so never hesitate to join and end along even if you know you won't be able to finish it but anyway December is all about stranded color work and here's a look at some of the finished objects that are in the thread right now absolutely gorgeous. I, stranded color work is just, it's got me right now. I see it. I see the pretty motifs and um, I just instantly want to start working on some kind of stranded color work project. I think it's the rhythm of, you know, holding yarn in two different hands. I think I was chatting with um, somebody on Ravelry about that just the other day. There's something about the discipline and the rhythm in the process that just makes it so addictive. So it's really fun to see the things that you guys are working on. I have asked um, that you guys show the floats of your project. And I'm telling you, some of these hats that you guys are knitting could be just as beautiful on the float side as they are on the right side. So loving that. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next make along. All right, the last make along that we have going on right now is the Wool Needles Hands Garland Along 2018. This ends on January 1st, and this is where we are knitting or crocheting garlands to use as decor for holidays or what have you. It doesn't matter. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's cool seeing the things that you guys are working on. It's a little bit unconventional. I do plan on bringing this back next year, but in a different format. And I'll talk to you guys about that in just a little bit. But here's a quick look at some of the finished objects from this make along. To learn 
more about that make-along or to get involved, if you think you can make a garland before January 1st, head over to the Ravelry group and you can find more information there. All right, guys, 2019 is right around the corner and I have the wheels have been turning for the different knit-alongs that I would like to do um, for 2019. So I wanna take a minute and share with you guys some of the ideas I have for the 2019 Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast knit-alongs. Okay, the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Cal 2019 is going to be a returning knit-along for next year. So we're going to be doing the same thing that we did this year where we knit a different hat every month. You can jump in and out of the knit along as you'd like. Um, and again, this is all the guidelines are going to be pretty much similar um, moving forward with this. The only thing that I want to switch up here are the different themes for the different months. And instead of me coming up with the themes for each of the months, I'd love it if you guys could submit some ideas for different hat themes, um, knitting themes or crochet themes. Uh, it, it can't be specific to one or the other. It has to be something that could be um, kind of considered in both knitting and crochet, but I want to come up with 12 different themes for all of the 12 months of 2019. So for example, um, you know, stranded color work was one of the themes, uh, hats knit with lace weight yarn, hats knit with cables, hats knit for babies. Um, and we can of course keep some of those themes the same and I may actually do that but I'd like to shake it up a bit with some suggestions from you guys so if you have some ideas for themes that would be a lot of fun to include in next year's round of the wool needles hands here of hats knit along then please let me know down in the comments below you can let me know on Ravelry I'll open up a thread over there you can email me what have you. Anyway, just figure out a way to let me know what you think if you would like to suggest what we do for the Year of Hats Cal next year. But that will be kicking off in January. And because I'm asking you guys to help me come up with some ideas for themes, and because we may not have all those themes in line um, by January, January is going to be knit a hat of your choice. So January is Knitter's Choice. It's the first month of the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Cal 2019. Use the hashtag, hashtag WNH, Year of Hats K. AL 2019 if you're posting anything on Instagram or any other forms of social media. Um, but yeah, January is going to be a knitter's choice. In the meantime, though, help me out. Send me some suggestions. What should we do for various different themes for 2019? Okay, the first new knit along that is coming to the podcast is um, something that kind of just came up uh, by accident. So let me explain. Okay, so the other day as I was folding laundry, I came across a pair of socks that I knit last year. I'm gonna go ahead and pop up a picture right here of these socks that I knit around this time last year. They are uh, Family Work Socks by Yarnspirations. A really easy worsted weight knit, just a basic kind of ribbed leg stockinette sock. It's just the, the best socks, so cozy, so warm. I love them, I wore them so often. Well, anyway, I was folding clothes and I found them in the laundry basket and they were completely felted. They had gotten mixed in with the regular laundry and they were washed and dried and completely felted. It was almost comical how they looked because um, in cartoons where you've seen, they do like laundry and like little cartoons and they pull it out of the dryer and something that was once a, a regular adult size is like teeny tiny. It was like that kind of a situation. I pulled out my sock and it was this teeny tiny fuzzy, thick like child sock and I wasn't too upset about it because it was I think just one of those things where I'm realizing it was my own mistake no big deal but I think also too instantly I realized like this is the greatest cozy house sock for my oldest son who's three and a half so anyway long story long I decided that I was gonna go and try them on his feet to see if they would fit as a really nice pair of cozy house socks and they fit him perfectly you guys it was amazing and not only did they fit him perfectly they are the coziest thickest warmest wool socks so i'm going to go ahead and show you so you saw the picture of what they looked like originally well here it is um and this is <laughs> it's look how teeny and this is on like a small sock blocker so if i take it off of the sock blocker it's um you know it's little <laughs> so there it is my little uh felted sock. Now these have been well worn. You can see there's some pilling going on uh, on the bottom here. I knit these in Patton's classic wool worsted and so they're a real rustic um, wool sock and they've held up beautifully and I've worn them outside you know on our patio just because you know you do that and um, and just side note if you hear little children outside 
it's because my babies are awake and they're playing. It's evening time right now. My husband's home. Um, so I apologize if that's distracting, but my little ones are out there having a grand old time from what it sounds like. But back to the sock, I'm, I'm loving these. And I think that the felting has almost fortified the sock in a way because it's like thick, just intense, warm socks. I can't even, they're just perfect. So look at this. I'm going to hold this here. Just look at how thick they are and how warm they must be, right? Like they're so squishy. Nothing, I mean, I know felting is a craft that people purposely do, but I feel like it's suggested that felting is a way of like you damage the fabric when you felt it. And I mean, maybe technically the fibers, the wool fibers are, you know, all frazzled and, and knotted up together, but it's almost, like I said, it's fortifying the fabric. It's so strong. It's so durable. Um, yeah. So he put these on, he loved them. He wore them around the house. You definitely slip and slide. If you have hard floors, they're super, super slippery, even more so than the regular knit socks because there's no skin coming through to grip at all. Um, because it's just this thick, impenetrable layer of wool. <laughs> but anyway, that is the first felted wool sock. This is the one that, um, or this is the pair that was done by accident. My dad came over and we were chatting about it. He noticed the socks that my son was wearing and he said, those are fantastic. I love a pair of warm wooly socks like that. And I explained to him what had happened. Well, last year I had also knit a pair of family work socks um, for me in a different color, a gray and a white with a red uh, little st uh, stripe at the cuff. And I have a whole episode where I talk a little bit about the history of the family work socks and all of that. But, any, but I knit a pair just like that for myself that were far too big, gave them to my dad thinking they would fit him better and they were even big on his foot as well. He thought it would be clever to take those socks, try doing the same thing, thinking it would shrink them down a little bit and it would fit his foot just very similar to the way these um, were fitting my son or maybe even a little bit more snugly. So he went home and decided to do that, came back to see me um, a couple days later. We had lunch together and he brought them to me. And again, the socks were almost like comically smaller than they were originally. And he said that he just couldn't get his foot into them. I um, mean, he tried stretching them out, but you know, he no to no avail. I tried them on my feet and they were amazing. Like so warm, so cozy. I loved them. This is um, the family work sock and I'll go ahead and pop a picture up right here so you can see the original that I knit um, last year, which is this, but pre felted. This is the felted version. And you guys like, it's amazing. I took a picture on Instagram of the socks on and of the socks just laying on my table. And I just felt like they looked like the perfect example of like a knit sock, kind of like cartoony almost. So there they are, family work socks, felted. Let's get up close and you, this cuff got a little stretched out because I think my dad was trying to stretch him a little bit to get him over his foot. Um, and I haven't blocked them. This is just pretty much how they come out of the dryer looking like this. So here they are, felted and squishy. Like, look how, I'm gonna fold them like this. Look how thick they are. It's amazing. Oh, so, so cozy. Um, like I said, I took a picture of them on my feet. I'll pop that up right here so you can see that they're, they fit really nicely. They were really big on my feet before, but now they fit just perfectly nice and snug and amazing. All of that has inspired me to come up with a knit along for just that felting our socks. And so I'm gonna call this the Wool Needles Hands Felt My Socks KAL 2019. And I don't have all of the logistics ironed out completely, but I do know that this is going to be a year long knit along. We're gonna go ahead and start it in January. You can choose any pattern you like to felt. You can choose a pattern that is already set up for you to felt. You can come up with a pattern yourself. It's completely up to you. We're going to be doing this all year. I don't have any designated um, project submission dates. I'm just going to say that you can have all, we're going to just compile as many felted socks as we can by the end of 2019. And then at the end of the year, I will pick a winner from the whole thing for the prize for the Felt My Socks Cal 2019. So submit your socks, your finished objects to the finished object thread, which I'm going to go ahead and get up onto Ravelry right away 
way. Submit your chatter on the chatter thread. You can tell us the patterns that you're gonna choose, the dimensions that you're gonna be knitting to. But in the meantime, we're just gonna go ahead and get started. So if you're inspired to do this, if you kind of know how you wanna kick this off for 2019 for yourself, go ahead and get started. We're doing it all year long. You can um, participate as little or as much as you'd like. And then just anything that you complete, submit it to the finished object thread. And then I will draw from the finished objects at the end of the year for the final prize. So it's kind of a real casual, low key um, knit along, but everything, uh, the finished objects all have to be felted. That's uh, kind of the main thing is that we are felting this. Include things such as your swatch before felting, your swatch after felting, if that's something that you're doing, tell us the yarn, tell us the pattern. Um, yeah, so we're gonna talk more about that as the year launches, I guess you could say, but we're gonna start that at the beginning of the year um, for 2019. And you can post anything on social media as hashtag WNH felt my socks 2019, or excuse me, WNH felt my socks KAL 2019. And uh, I'll be chatting about it here on each episode of the podcast. I'll go ahead and share a few of the finished objects as they come through on the podcast when we have enough uh, to kind of share in a montage. So that is the last new knit along coming to the podcast for 2019. New knit alongs might pop up here and there, but I'm really focusing all of my efforts on not putting more on my plate than I can handle for 2019. And um, I think that's really smart because things are becoming a little hectic. Uh, hectic's not the right word. Things are becoming, they're bustling. And so I have to really pay attention to that kind of thing. So these are the knit alongs that I have planned so far for 2019. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that opening section of the podcast is always just, I know it's lengthy, I know it can get long, um, and I know that many of you know that you're more than welcome to skim past that if you'd like. Um, there's always lots of talk in the beginning because I like to share with you guys the deets, uh, the things that are going on over here at the podcast. Um, but that is really, it's a challenge to get it all out <laughs> and to make sure that I don't leave anything out um, because I wanna keep you guys in the loop as much as possible. And because I know there's new faces that are popping up over here on the channel and I wanna make sure everybody's informed. But it's kinda nice when that's behind me and I can just relax into the podcast a little bit. And I know that some of you probably just skip over that section when you're a regular viewer and you kinda know what's going on um, just to come right to the what you drink in section or even to sections beyond. And that's totally fine with me. Um, I put little timestamps down below in the show notes so you can just click on those and it'll take you to where you would like to start watching Watching, and that's fine too. But anyway, just so you know, for future reference, that's always gonna be there because that's how I keep my viewers informed of things that are going on. And I kind of like doing that. I like knowing that you guys know what's going on. Um, but yeah, you're more than welcome. If you're already in the loop, you're more than welcome to skim over that. It's completely up to you. But I'm happy to be at this portion of the podcast where I can just kind of relax into the podcast a little bit. I am actually a little under the weather. Um, I'm hoping that's not too obvious. I can, I look a little bit under the weather. I was looking at myself when I was um, getting ready to sit down and my eyes are kind of a little glassy, um, tired. Both of my boys have a cold right now. Um, I have a cold. My husband seems to be doing fine, but with the way things are going, I'm sure it's, he's not long for, his little cold free existence because both of our little runny nose kiddos are probably gonna give it to him if I don't give it to him. So that's what's going on. But you know, it's great because you and I, we can hang out and chat and you don't have to worry about catching my cold. It's great. So there's that. So I apologize if I sound a little nasal, um, but what can you do? I am drinking coffee and I'm, it's getting kind of low in my cup. I've been, that whole opening segment takes a while to film and so I've been drinking on it um, as I've been filming. And the reason why it's not sitting back here where you can see it is it's sitting over here on that thing right there. You can't really see it very well, but this is, yeah, it looks like, um, oops. It looks like one of those like candle warmers that you can get, but it's uh, for putting your coffee mug on and it keeps your coffee hot. That is what I use when I'm drinking coffee. I've mentioned this before, but coffee, I don't know why, cools down so fast. Um, 
I'm lucky if I can drink it all before it gets cool and I don't like like room temperature or like even slightly below steaming hot coffee just ugh, puts me off. I like my coffee to be really, really hot. So anyway, that's where this is sitting. Um, but I'm drinking this because I'm filming a podcast. It's nighttime. It's about six o'clock in the evening and I'm going to edit this podcast tonight. So I want to make sure I have the energy that I need to get this podcast edited because I know it's behind. I know that typically you guys are familiar with a podcast every two weeks. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, we're going to be going to a monthly schedule, which I have to be honest is kind of a sigh of relief for me right now. Um, because of all of the things that are going on. But uh, yeah, so I apologize that it's been so long, but I am going to get this up. Come hell or high water, I'm gonna get this up. By the end of Friday, um, you might even notice this early Saturday morning, but something's going on. But it will be up for you guys. Um, obviously, if you're watching it, it's up. That's how that works. I also wanted to take this time to share with you guys the hat that I'm wearing today. I'm actually really, I'm excited to share this with you guys because this is one of the first hats that I ever knit and that was back in 2010. This is called, I believe it is the, this is the Sideways Grande Cloche by Laura Irwin. I knit this back in January of 2010 out of, I think it was Misty Alpaca Grande. Um, all of my information is on Ravelry and I should, probably should have had that like on the top of my head before I shared this with you. But it is, like I said, the Sideways Grande Cloche by Laura Irwin and I love it so so much. I mentioned a few episodes back that I was going to wear hats in kind of honor of the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along, but the weather just wasn't chilly enough to keep one on for the entire duration of filming. But now it definitely is. I actually cracked the window behind me so it would let some of that cool winter air in to make it a little bit more appropriate to be wearing the hat inside the house. It's really chilly outside so that may actually change or I might put a sweater on in just a minute, but it's it's nice. It's nice and cozy. So this, like I said, the um, this is the Sideways Grande Clothes. It's really comfortable. I love this hat. It's super easy to wear. It has a really cool kind of horizontal ribbing detail that's happening up here. And then it's an interesting construction too because this whole part is knit flat. And then you pick up stitches for the crown up here. And then you add this like twisted... It's not really a cable, it's like a faux cable. It's essentially just two strips of knit fabric that have been kind of twisted around one another and then sewn onto the hat. Um, yeah, but I love this. It's such a fun hat. I definitely think I'm gonna be knitting another one of these because I feel like I would love this in red. I don't know, that's neither here nor there. I just wanted to wear it and share it with you guys as something, you know, knit from the past, one of my early uh, knitted projects. So yeah, that's what I am wearing today. Love it so much. I do love the color because it goes with everything and it has that really nice kind of vintagey shape to it, that cloche shape that I really think is like, like a 20s, 30s, uh, inspired kind of design. I'm looking at it at my screen right now and I just really love it. I feel like I should have twisted this a couple more times, but I don't know. Like I said, it was like early knitting career for me. I think I'd only been knitting for a little under a year when I um, did this. And so, yeah, but that is what I'm wearing and that coffee is what I'm drinking, but I am ready to go ahead and jump into this podcast. Okay, I actually have a finished object for you guys today, and it's interesting because you haven't even seen this on the podcast yet. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen it there. I've only shown it once. Um, I kind of jumped into this uh, all willy-nilly. It wasn't in my project forecasting. I didn't have it in my queue, and as many of you might know, I am working from my queue. I have a very disciplined approach to my queue right now. Well, this wasn't part of that. And the reason why I decided I just wanted to jump into this was because I wanted to participate in the last month of the knit along for the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Cal 2018. And the December month is Stranded Color Work, like I mentioned earlier. And I've been participating intermittently throughout the year, but not, I think I've maybe only done a theme appropriate hat three times this year for the knit along. And I definitely wanted to end in December finishing one as well. So that was one of the reasons. The other reason was because I had some yarn that I've been wanting to use for a stranded color work hat for my husband um, as a gift. And so that's what this is. So this is a new pat. Well, I think it's new. I think this is a new design by um, Diana Walla, who is Cake and Vikings on Instagram. She designed the hoopla hat, which I show in a previous episode. <clears throat> 
several episodes back and I love her stranded color work motifs. They're very simple but really beautiful to look at. Um, simple to knit I should say, beautiful to look at and really easy to kind of modify if you want to add a couple extra colors in there. So that's um, what this is. So this is the Cliff Park hat by Diana Walla. So if this, I'm showing this in my finished objects segment, it's not 100% finished. I still need to block it and throw a pom pom on it. Um, but I just wanted to go ahead and show it to you guys here because for all intents and purposes, it's completely wearable as is. And I love it. I love it so much. And I think my husband, um, really likes it too and it was supposed to be a Christmas gift but I've been working on it on the couch next to him while we watch you know the Great British Baking Show and um so I mean he he knew it existed I just have been kind of working on it and not talking about it um and he hasn't asked I almost think he has like radar for when I'm working on something that's for him because typically he asks like what are you working on or hey that looks really nice who's that going to be for he didn't do that with this so I had this like sneaking suspicion that he knew it was for him but anyway really love it so a couple of things though, you might be thinking that this looks really big and it is big. Um, my husband's head measures 23 inches around, which is actually quite large even for an adult male's head. Um, but he's just really tall and he's just, you know, being a tall man, I guess you have a big, don't even go there. <laughs> but this is gonna be um, a good size for him because it's going to fit him kind of like one of those like hockey beanies that you see. They're like the, the with the pom-poms and the hockey teams and they're real big and slouchy. That's kind of what's gonna happen with this. It definitely is not going to be a folded brim because I've only knit about two inches of a two by two ribbed brim here and I did that on purpose. I kind of wanted it to hug in in just this area and then I let the the shape of the hat kind of do its thing around the rest of his head as opposed to having like a folded brim that hugs in for like four inches around the head this is just a little part right here and then the shaping of the hat kind of holds onto his head otherwise I don't know if that makes any sense I should have him put it on and take some pictures and model it for you and then maybe you'll understand but I think it's gonna look really nice with a pom-pom I actually already made the pom-pom if you look closely at the motif I've taken these diamonds in the middle and these were supposed to be the same as these ones here, just smaller in the same two colors, but I wanted to kind of shake it up a little bit and add something different. I kind of think I made a mistake with which color I put where. I almost feel like I should have done the navy on the outside of the diamond and the yellow on the inside just because that yellow it's too close in tone to the gray, so it's a little bit harder to see, but you know, it's a nice, diff you know, contrasting pop. But I took the two colors from that portion of the motif and I put them together to create a pom-pom. And I'm kind of hoping that maybe this pom-pom will help bring out those little colors. So when it's all said and done, it will look like this. It's hard to show it here. Yeah, so it'll look like that when it's all finished. Let's see. Yeah, I think it'll be really cool. I think it'll look neat, kind of different, interesting looking. So I'm really happy with this. Now this is knit and um, this is another thing too. I actually purchased this yarn for the purpose of creating a color work hat for Brandon. This is Jameson and Smith, which is not to be confused by Jameson Spindrift or Jameson and there's another, ja there's like two different Jameson Shetland wool companies. This is Jameson and Smith, real Shetland wool, and they go by the Shetland Wool Brokers. Um, so you can find them at shetlandwoolbrokers.com, but this is what their logo looks like. Um, you may be familiar with this. Um, so yeah, this looks different than the other Jameson and Smith. So there's two different Jameson and Smiths. This is the Wool Brokers, Jameson and Smith, and this is their Aaron weight. And um, Aaron, this, I'm going to show this in the cake so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about here. So here is the blue in a cake. Now this is an Aran weight yarn, but really honestly at first glance it looks like a bulky weight yarn. It's it's pretty heavy. Um, typically we think Aran, we think heavy worsted, and and typically that's correct. But this particular Aran is a really heavy worsted, almost like a light bulky if that's even a thing. So when I started the hat, I knew it was going to be larger than the 
the dimensions of the pattern because that calls for a regular worsted weight, but I did it on purpose. I kind of wanted it to be a little bit bigger. So I allowed the heavier weight yarn to kind of do the sizing for me, essentially. I knit the medium size pattern. So I didn't knit the large size. I didn't want it to be too large. So I knit the medium size with a heavier weight Aaron yarn by Jameson and Smith and it worked up to be pretty good. The only other thing that I did here as a modification to the hat was I did some shaping. So typically, well, I don't even know if it's typical. I just know that a lot of times when you knit a beanie like this, you knit your um, brim in a smaller needle size, which is what I did here. Oh, and I also did a two by two as opposed to a one by one because I, I far prefer a uh, two by two to a one by one on anything. Um, but I did that here on a smaller needle size. And then instead of just continuing um, the hat with the same stitch count, but on a larger needle size for the body, I actually um, added some stitches. I added a whole nother repeat of the color work pattern uh, worth of stitches to the hat to create kind of that like shaping around the head So it's not just this like long tube that cinches in really tight here and then gets really saggy at the top I kind of wanted it to work with the shape of his head. So I added and you can see where I did that I just um, did some increases at the beginning of the round um, Am I turning it right? No, right here. Where is it? There we go So I did some increases right in here and it, you kind of see it, 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 you can see it kind of moving in either direction to add a whole nother repeats worth of stitches to the hat, the body of the hat itself. And I really like the way that that worked out. It added a really nice shape um, to the hat. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on for you so you can see kind of what I'm talking about with, now it's gonna be much larger on my head than it is on my husband's head, but I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here we are. So this is the hat. You can see it's nice and slouchy in the back. Um, it cinches in really nicely right here. And then it kind of, I guess you might not be able to see it very well, but it does kind of come out just a little bit on the sides here so that it can lay down in the back. And then when there's a pom-pom on it, it'll have a really nice slouch. So I really think that this is going to fit him perfectly. And you know what? I might just be able to sneak him in here so he can model it for you. Hold on one second. Okay. So he's here to model his hat for us. Ah, ta -da. Fits him nice. So turn to the camera there. So it kind of cinches in right here and then it works its way out this way and I don't even know turn that way yeah oh wait no come back this way and look at <laughs> there and then down <gasps> look how nice it looks it looks really good yeah. come in a little bit closer oh oh I hear babies out there okay all right Thank you. I'll take that. So I think it looks really good on him. I'm excited. I um, don't know. You probably, the shaping is probably not even noticeable on camera, but it, it works in the fit of the hat, I think, when I look at it on his head. Um, but yeah, I just, I like it. It'll be nice. I'm going to block it very gently. I may actually just steam block it as opposed to wet blocking it um, because I want to make sure it doesn't grow too much. Um, but this is Shetland wool. This is 100% Shetland wool. It's very resilient. Uh, so I'm not too worried about it losing its shape or anything like that but I'm really excited about that so this is the Cliff Park hat by Diana Walla and I have knitted in Jameson and Smith Shetland wool and yeah I love it so early Christmas present for my husband <laughs> all right let's go ahead and talk about the works in progress I have going on right now now just like I mentioned earlier, the last month has been kind of a whirlwind for me. So I've made progress, but it's been slow progress for that reason and also for another reason, which I'll chat about in just a second. But my first work in progress I want to share with you guys is my truss cardigan. So this is a design by Brooklyn Tweed by Melissa Whirl. It's a beautiful boxy cardigan. I'll pop a picture up here so you can see it. It has a really pretty kind of A-line um, cable motif on the side with some really cool vertical ribbing. It starts from the bottom and it's knit up. Up, um, in one piece and I think when I spoke with you guys last time I'd only finished the ribbing and had just started that kind of a-line cable motif that's running up the sides of the cardigan so I've made significant progress since then however things have come to a halt a few different times and we'll talk about that in just a second so here is and my needles are in wacky positions so I'm gonna have to hold this weird but this is what I have so far of my cardigan so I've knit I would say this is probably a good 10 inches of the body of the cardigan 
And that's not bad. Considering everything going on, that's not bad. But I have kind of stopped working on this to favor um, a couple of gift knits, one being the hat that I finished for my husband and then another being a pair of socks, which I'll talk to you guys about in just a second. But also I had to kind of put it off to the side because I was having the most trouble with this A-line or A, you know, kind of like figure A cable motif that's going on up the side of the cardigan. So you can see if I hold this, there's kind of like a upside down V shape of cables running up here with little eyelets running alongside of it. That has given me the most trouble. I don't understand why it's so hard for me. Actually, I do. Go back to episode 35 and I'll go on and on all about this. Um, so I'm not going to do that here because you know, nobody needs that right now. But if you do, if you're interested in knowing like my issues with this, head back to episode 35. But in the meantime, I've had some issues with this particular motif, this like cable pattern. Um, and there is some, one of them was, you know, not so bad. I mentioned it in episode 35 where one of my eyelids was kind of like off. So it was in the wrong spot, but it didn't mess up my stitch count. And it wasn't that noticeable. And I had kind of figured it was, I realized it was there, you know, a couple inches after the fact and I didn't want to go back and fix it. Well, I think three other times since then that's happened. Not three, I think twice since then that's happened and I'd caught it because I've been paying attention now I'd caught it soon enough um, that I could go back and fix it but it was still a pain because you have to knit back I'm not comfortable with adding lifelines and just ripping my work back I knit back whenever I can and so it's just become exhausting and annoying and I'm so painfully close to the end of the chart because when you're done with the chart it's essentially stocking it so you don't have any of this you know, complicated cabling and decreasing and increasing left um, and, and cabling purl wise and cabling knit wise and cabling to the left and cabling to the right. And it's just, you don't have that after the chart's over. So I'm so close to being to that point and I can't wait to get to that point. But I think right now, as I'm looking at this, I'm in the process of knitting back to fix one of those mistakes. And the mistake that I need to fix is that in between the little cables, there's a section of garter stitch in between those little cables. Well, the last two rows, mine has turned out to be stockinette stitch, and so I have to go back and change that. That's gonna drive me nuts. And you know, it's not, it's only two rows of knitting, so it's not, it's, it's important to just go back and fix it in that case, I guess. But yeah, so otherwise, when I say otherwise, I really love this pattern. What I mean is when I'm not doing the chart, I really love this pattern. So when I'm just doing stockinette stitch, it's fantastic. But as soon as I get to the chart, I'd rather be doing something else because it's it's a pain. But again, I love the, pe the design and the finished project. I'm really excited to have it done because I'd love to wear it. I love the yarn. So that's kind of driving me forward. Um, not like I would give up on it or anything like that. It's not that bad. Um, but yeah, so I'm not going to lie and say this is just such a fun, relaxing knit. I, it's, it's potato chippy or whatever. It's definitely not that. Um, so yeah, that's that's just my take on it. If you've knit this before and you have any insight for me, please leave it down below in the comment section. But that's kind of where I'm at with this. I am going to have this chart because I finished Brandon's uh, Cliff Park hat. I'm going to go ahead and finish this chart like next, that's gonna be my next thing I do when I pull out my knitting is finish up the chart. So then it does become that, you know, potato chippy knit um, where I can just kind of work on it mindlessly during the holiday season, Christmas is right around the corner. Um, I'm kind of taking a break right now so I have something I can work on that's easy and relaxing. That's what I'm gonna do with this. But that's kind of where I am. That's why I haven't made it past that chart because I have to go back and fix my mistakes. And honestly, the mistakes are due to just I think just being like kind of over it and not you know giving it my 100% attention when I'm working on it. Um, various different reasons, what have you. But that is my trust cardigan. I'm thinking that once I get past the chart, this thing's gonna fly off the needles. I mean, it's really, it knits up pretty fast considering this is knit in Brooklyn Tweed. Um, Shelter is a worsted weight yarn, really nice uh, yarn that knits up pretty quickly. So yeah, that's that's my progress with that. Uh, I'm happy with it. I mean, I'm happy with the way it's looking. The sizing is going to be perfect. 
what more can I say? Talk to me in episode 37 when I'm beyond this chart and possibly even working on the sleeves. But in the meantime, I shall finish the chart and move forward with the trust cardigan. Okay, my next work in progress are the Silver Dream Socks by Drops Designs. This is a project from my queue that I came up with in project forecasting. I had planned for this. I wanted to knit these for my dad for Christmas and I started these when we left on our little trip that we took um, right after I uploaded the last episode of the podcast and I was able to knit through the color work section on these super fast. They kind of fly. Um, the leg of these really fly because of the color work um, but again it just kind of slowed down because things got a little bit busy but I'm fairly confident I should be able to finish um, the second sock before Christmas. I'm not 100%, but I'm fairly confident I can. So anyway, without further ado, here are the Silver Dreams, oh, here is one of the Silver Dreams socks. They're pretty long and they're pretty big, and I'm gonna talk about that in a second too, so it's hard to hold it in the frame altogether. Um, but this is what I have so far. And they're beautiful. So like I said, this is a design by Drops Designs. It's a Fair Isle motif. And the design calls for two colors. So it's a two color Fair Isle, but I wanted to include um, a couple different colors or three different colors here for some added interest. And I'm really happy with the way that this turned out. It's beautiful, um, real just classy looking. There's something about the color combination that's just kind of classy. And when it comes to where I place the colors, because again, the motif is in one color in the pattern and then the body of the sock is in another color. Um, and I actually am not 100%, no, they do have a contrasting heel, I believe. Um, I, I mean, I did a contrasting heel just because I like the way that looks. But I just kind of on the actual pattern itself, I wrote down where I wanted to do the different colors. And then up here in the cuff, which is also not called for in the pattern, I added, um, the colors that were in the motif as kind of little contrasting stripes for a little bit of a sporty look at the top. So this is um, Fiber for the People in the Merino Worsted base. This is English Toffee. The green is also Fiber for the People on the same base, and this is Green Ochre. And then the navy that you're seeing here, oh, excuse me, this is not the Merino Worsted base. This is the Blueface Luster uh, BFL DK weight base. Apologize for that. Um, and then the navy is Debbie Bliss Cash Merino DK. And I had that in my stash, a whole bunch of that in my stash. And so I thought it looked really pretty with those two colors together. So I'm really liking the colors all together. And like I said, I just kind of came up with where each of the colors were gonna go, you know, randomly on my own. And then I pulled out that English toffee for the heel. So loving this, really love the color motif, excited to have it finished. They're starting to seem, or they're knitting up a little bit larger than I was hoping for. I kind of suspected they were gonna be a little bit on the roomier side when I was knitting the leg, and that was okay. That was kind of what I was going for, is a nice roomy sock that you can bunch up, you know, at your ankle over a pair of sweatpants or something, I don't know. Um, but then as I started knitting the foot, I started realizing that they're gonna be kind of like pretty big. So I had my husband try them on. Now he's a size 13 foot. My dad is a 10 and a half, I believe. Um, and I'm not finished with the length. The length I can adjust, I'm not worried about that. But the width of the foot, I'm a little concerned about because it fit my husband's foot pretty well. Um, not too snug, but kind of perfectly. And I know he has wider feet than my dad. And so I think it's gonna fit a little bit on the big side. And, and I can't felt these because this is super wash yarn, so it won't felt really. I guess it might shrink a little bit. Um, but in, you know, the spirit of felting, I don't think that's gonna work in this particular case. Plus, I don't think it's that much bigger um, to warrant felting it. So we'll see. If it ends up being too big, um, I may just give them to my husband. My dad doesn't know I'm knitting them for him, and I may actually just knit my dad a pair of worsted weight socks with the Patton's Classic Wool and felt them because he loved those so much and they ended up not fitting him after he felted them. So maybe that's what I'll do. That could be a possible solution. But in the meantime, I do really love these. It's a really nice pattern. If you're familiar with sock knitting, the pattern is easy because you already understand how to construct a sock. If you're not familiar with sock knitting, this might be a confusing pattern because it's not the most 
um, well written pattern. It's not very well organized. It's just one big block of text and there's a lot of at the same times that are happening in there that I think are kind of unnecessary. Um, they could probably be written up a little bit differently. So not really the best if you're a first time sock knitter. Um, so there's that consideration. But otherwise, if you're familiar with sock knitting and you just get the basic construction of a sock, um, you really only need the pattern for the motif. Honestly, like if you know how to knit socks, you can just work the rest of the sock in whatever, you know, fashion you like. And that's kind of what I'm doing at this point too. And I did that with my heel as well. This is a slip stitch heel. And it kind of comes out looking like a little bit of a basket weave here. And the way that I get it to look like this, so not all slip stitch heels look like this, um, but the way I get this cool basket weave effect is I slip the stitch purl wise with the yarn in front and then you know I wrap the yarn to the back when I knit the next stitch and it creates a little bit of a yarn wrap that I don't know contributes to this basket weave texture I'll hold it up a little closer so you can maybe see what I'm talking about here yeah I think it's gonna be kind of hard to show it but that's what's happening so slipping the stitch purl wise with the yarn in front and wrapping it to the back before knitting the next stitch that's what's going to give it that little bit of a basket weave look to it but i love it it's a real nice squishy heel nice and durable um but yeah really squishy and comfortable kind of hugs the heel a little bit so that's that's my silver dream socks love them might be too big for my dad might be perfect for my husband who knows really fast to work up in a dk weight yarn really nice motif um this is a classic fair isle motif with the diamonds and the x's which i really like and again i love the colors so that is my silver dream socks and i'm hoping to have shoot i'm hoping to have at least this one finished um, by the end of next week and then I can get them both finished by Christmas. We're taking a family vacation to Dallas, Texas um, right after Christmas. So the 28th of December, we're heading out to Dallas. We're going to stay for about a week and a half. So we're going to be there with my family and if anything, I could have these finished by then and give them to my dad there as kind of a belated Christmas present. Um, so we'll see if they end up fitting my dad. Who knows? Otherwise, I'm definitely going to cast on a pair of socks to felt for my dad because I know they would be just perfect for him. He would love that. So there's always that as an option. These socks, and I don't share my project bags very often, um, mainly because I forget, but also because uh, I just don't think it's all that necessary unless, you know, there's something super special about the project bag. Um, but this one is living in a new fringe field bag that I just recently purchased. I actually kind of went a little nuts. I purchased the plum field bag when that came out on the second round of that, just because I purchased the special edition, um, plaid tartan plaid that fringe released last year around this time and so I wanted to have this year's special edition because you know you need more project bags but I've been eyeballing the toffee project bag for quite a while now and so I went ahead and just purchased this one because I love it and because like I said you can always use more fringe field bags and I'm a big you know I love just the basis of her company and supporting something that's you know made in America and that kind of thing and this is the original field bag and it's, it's the best and I have my little candy skull pin this came from Firebird Yarns in San Francisco California Ugh, love it so much there's a gold yarn ball inside the skull which is what makes it yarny but anyway I think it looks really cool on the project bag so that I guess you could call that a new acquisition. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm, I'm loving it. I'm excited about it. I like this color. This color speaks to me. So, all right guys. So that's all I have in the way of works in progress. I do have some project forecasting in mind and I will share that with you guys on the next episode. But for now, that's all I've got on my needles. guys, I want to add a little segment that I do on the podcast occasionally as it comes up. And I'm going to call this knit and review. And a lot of us when we on, you know, knitting podcasts or on Instagram, when we share our knits, we will share a finished object right after we finish it, after we block it, maybe we've worn it once. Um, but pretty quickly after it's finished, we're talking about it and raving about it and, and all of that. And I think that's great. Um, but 
I don't see a lot of people coming back after having worn something several times and then talking about it, um, you know, commenting on the way that it wears, how resilient it is. And I wanted to take a minute to do that with a particular project that I just recently finished. Um, not so recently, but recently enough that you're probably going to remember it if you watch the podcast, but I've also had a chance to wear it several times. And I just want to chat a little bit about how I feel about it after having worn it a few times. Okay, as many of you know, I talk about it a lot. I am a two by twoer all the way. I love two by two rib far more than one by one rib. It's just my jam. I think it looks nice. I feel like it's functional. Um, I think for the purpose of a rib, I feel like it's almost even more functional than a one by one because it's a little bit more resilient. It holds its shape a little bit better. And what I'm going to share with you right now is kind of a prime example for why I feel this way. So I just recently com uh, completed the Mira hat. So this is a pattern by Amy Christopher's for Barocco yarn. Beautiful, beautiful pattern. But there's a couple, there, actually, there's just one thing that um, kind of gets me a little bit with this that I'm not so sure I like. And that is, of course, the one by one rib. Now, it's not an aesthetic thing here, really, um, aesthetically, you know, speaking, it doesn't bother me because I, you know, it, it looks fine. It's fine. And actually somebody mentioned in the comments when I shared this on the podcast that the one by one kind of works well with the one by one repeat of the color work happening right here and actually throughout much of the pattern. And I get that. I think that that color repeat and the textural repeat of the brim, um, it is, it is nice to kind of have that cooperate with one another um, because there's like a visual, you know, organization that is appealing to the eye. But functionally speaking, it just isn't working for me. Whenever I wear this hat, the, and okay, and another thing too is this was knit on one needle size smaller than what's called for in the actual hat, which is fine. But I almost feel like had I gone down three needle sizes, and, I, and I'm not exaggerating, like had I gone down three needle sizes for the brim, it may have become, it may have made for a more functional brim in this particular case, because this brim, and you can see like as I shake this, like you can see how kind of floppy the brim is. Now this is knit in Fiber for the People yarn in the Merino Worsted base, which is a non-superwash yarn and a quite resilient um, yarn and, and also quite rustic for an all Merino yarn. Merino is a fine wool and can tend to be um, really soft and not as resilient as a more rustic, you know, Highland wool. But considering all of that, it just seems like it's not holding up to the weight of the body of the hat because there's, you know, obviously this is stranded color work. You have lots of different strands of yarn happening in the body of the hat, making it a much thicker, you know, piece of fabric as opposed to the brim. And so this brim is just not able to pull its weight, I guess you could say. Whenever I put it on my head, the hat just inevitably starts falling back because not only does it have the weight of the fabric being thicker from the stranded color work, but it also has the weight of that pom-pom kind of dangling down behind me, which starts to cause, you know, the hat to pull back. So I just feel like if I were to go back and knit this again, or if somebody were to knit this, what I would recommend is to go down in needle size, like almost three needle sizes, and then just adjust your stitch count when you get to the body of the hat if you need to. Go down three needle sizes and maybe try a two by two. And if you don't like that for aesthetic reasons, then continue with the one by one, but I think that going down in needle size uh, more drastically than what's already asked for in the pattern would just really help to create a more dense fabric that will help to hold up to the, dense, the density of the fabric that was created in the stranded color work. Now, all of that being said, one thing I have to, to note too is that this ecru color yarn that you're seeing here, it's a single ply, whereas the other worsted weight yarn is plied. So when this was wet blocked, the single ply of the ecru yarn blooms more um, or bloomed more than the plied worsted yarn. So that's gonna fill up more space, contributing to a more dense fabric. Now, had I knit this whole hat in this yarn, then I may not have this issue, but I don't really think that that's the case as much because even this section of the hat right here, which is knit in this base of yarn, is the same. It's still dense and thick and it doesn't hold up to the, the 
kind of minimal density of this portion right here. And so that's kind of what I wanted to chat with you guys a little bit about. I've had some time to wear this. I feel like I love the hat. I think it's beautiful. The patterns are beautiful. Um, it's just that one little thing, that one little, you know, thing that kind of is hanging me up is I wish that I had kind of known that going forward or not even like maybe that. And I guess the way that you could know that is to knit a gauge swatch with the yarn that you're planning on using for the motif and feeling the texture of it and then knitting the ribbing to feel the texture of that and then deciding if that's going to work. And honestly, that's not something I'm interested in doing. Um, but I don't know, just something I wanted to bring up. I had an example that I wanted to share with you guys of a two by two and a similar type of hat. So this is the Winter's Fern hat by Trin Anelli. Um, you know, color work hat. Now the white, the ecru color that you're seeing here is the same ecru color that I use in this hat. So it's gonna have that same density going on here. And then the additional yarn is of a similar weight and ply to the fiber for the people yarn in the Mira hat here. So it's a similar situation happening. Now the brim that I use here is a two by two and I believe, and I can't, I'm not hundred percent sure. I know I didn't go down three needle sizes to create the brim, but I did go down um, at least one needle size, which is the same as here. But because it's a two by two, I feel like you're getting a much kind of crisper knit because I think there's just more like consistency to the ribbing when it's a two by two. And I could go into detail about why I think that is, but for right now you can just see there's, you know, a nice kind of structured ribbing happening here with a two by two. And I think it just holds up to the weight and the density of the color work fabric of the body of the hat. <clears throat> and I know that it does because I wear this more frequently than I wear this and I've worn this a lot. And I feel like when I put this on my head, it just, stays in place better. I don't have that issue with it kind of falling down the back. It is a little bit lighter, um, but not by much. Like, yeah, it's really insignificant, the weight difference. So I don't know 100% if it's because of the two by two or what. All I know is that if I were to knit the Mira again, I would go down three needle sizes and I would make it a two by two rib. And I really think that would help to hold up to the density of the fabric that's um, created in the body of the hat. So anyway, that's all I wanted to share with you guys in this knit and review segment. Um, this segment will pop up on the podcast as it applies. Um, that's not always, I don't always have something to review in that kind of detail. Um, but when I do, I will share it with you guys here. Please let me know what you think if you have a similar experience or if you have some advice. Um, you can let me know down in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, that's just kind of my take on it so far. But again, it's a lovely pattern. It's a free pattern, which pff, can't complain about that. And this is not a complaint. This is just a review, kind of like, it's not even a critique. I don't know what this is. Take it for what it is. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm just letting you know how I feel about it. That's just my review of the Mira. So I thought I would share it with you guys. Again, let me know what you think and let's go ahead and move on. All right, guys, it's about time for me to wrap it up for episode 36. But before I go, I want to remind you guys of the local yarn store call to action that I host here at the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. This is where I ask you, the viewer, to go out into your community, to your local yarn shops, local craft shops, whatever it is, whatever place locally that gives you inspiration. Get some footage of those places. Send them to me here at the Wool Needles Hands Podcast at woolneedleshands at gmail.com. Just video footage. I'll be adding music over it so you don't have to worry about having any sound in there. Get permission first let them know where they can find it. I love doing it. It's my effort to help broaden the perspective of the knitting communities in our physical areas. And I think it's cool to see the local yarn shops that you guys visit and the little communities that you are a part of. Today, I wanna to share with you guys a yarn shop in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia. This is called The Mariner's Daughter. This was submitted to me by Laura Myers, who is You Made New on Instagram. Thank you so much, Laura. And I'm so excited to share this yarn shop because it is absolutely gorgeous. So here it is. This is The Mariner's Daughter.
All right, guys, if you can get footage of your local yarn shop, like I said, please send it to me at woolneedleshands at gmail.com and I will share them here on the podcast. If you would like to participate, please let me know in your email or however you get in touch with me, whether you would like me to keep you anonymous or to include your name and or which Instagram or Ravelry handle I can include. All right, guys, it is time for me to wrap it up today. This coffee is getting cold. <laughs> it's time for me to refill. I have a long night of editing ahead of me, but I'm excited to get this podcast out to you. The next podcast will be up mid-January. So a month from now, I will have episode 37 of the podcast up and ready. But between now and then, because the new year will begin, um, between now and the next time that I see you, keep posted on the Ravelry page for information about the upcoming knit-alongs. I will keep you guys posted there. Also, also keep posted on Instagram. I am very active on my Instagram accounts, both on Wool Needles Hands and Fiber for the People, so you can find more information about the things that are going on over there. Also keep posted here on the YouTube channel because between now and then I will be getting another vlog up for the last, um, kind of the last process of the last colorway for the Color Fest Sock Set Club for Fiber for the People. So all of that is coming, but until next time on episode 37 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast, happy knitting, happy whatever it is you're doing. Merry Christmas. Christmas if you're celebrating. Happy holidays to everybody and I will see you soon. Bye!